Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be providing some background information on the vertical distribution of seismic forces on building structures. And we're going to be referencing the ASCE 722 document, specifically section 12.8.3. So if you have your ASCE 722 book with you, go ahead, open that up to section 12.8.3. Uh, that should be around page 125. So as we get started, we first want to recall that the seismic base shear force, which is capital V, is equal to C sub S times W. So we might remember that from some previous content. C sub S is the seismic response coefficient. And according to ASC 722, we can determine C sub S by one of two methods. There's a method one and a method two to uh, determine C sub S. And then capital W is the effective seismic weight of the entire structure that you're interested in. And so this equation is given in um, equation 12.8-1 of the document ASC 722. So now let's talk about how do we take this seismic base shear force and we distribute this force into several horizontal forces vertically placed up your structure. Okay, so let's make a note here. We're going to say we will use that seismic base shear V to determine several horizontal forces, which we're going to call F sub X that are distributed vertically at each level of the structure. Okay, so for example, let's let's uh, have a little illustration here that can help us out. Let's say that I have a frame structure, okay? I'm just gonna sketch this here. And it could have, it could be any height and it could be, it could have as many stories uh, as we want it to. So let's just draw several stories here, okay? Now, the total height is measured from the ground surface and we're just gonna call that H, okay? Now, if we measure the height of each level, okay, let's, for example, call this H1, and then we'll call this height right here to, to this level H2. And then, of course, this one is H3, so on, okay? H4 will be up to this level. H5 will be up to this level. In total, H, the, the highest uh, height, which you could call H5, is total H uh, total height H. Now again, all these are measured from the ground surface. Okay, so if you recall, we model this as what we call a lumped mass system. Okay, and so these are lumped together as uh, masses at each level. Okay, and what are these masses or, or weights? We really um, express them as weights. Uh, these are the seismic weights at each level. So, you know, this would be W1, W2, W3, W4, W5. Each of those is a seismic weight, okay? Now, what we do is we follow either method one or method two to get C sub S, and what we can then calculate is this base shear force. That's what we've talked about so far. Well, now what we're going to end up doing is we're going to use this base shear force V to determine the, um, the forces at each level along and up this building. And they're, they're horizontal forces. So what we're effectively finding is F1, F2, F, uh, F3, F4, and F5. And, and just note, it doesn't have to be five of them. It could be two stories, one story, 20 stories, whatever, okay? 
So um, this is what we're interested in finding, these, these uh, horizontal forces that are vertically distributed. That's why we call it vertical distribution of seismic forces. So the question becomes, how do we get these, okay? So I'm gonna make a note here. I'm gonna say at level X, what we're gonna have is F sub X equals this coefficient CVX multiplied by that base shear force. Now this is given in ASC 722 as equation 12.8-12, okay? Now the question becomes what is CVX, right? We know capital V is base shear force. We've already talked about that, but what is CVX? So CVX is calculated uh, also in, in that same section of the document as close that out as W sub X times H sub X raised to the K power divided by the summation of W sub I times H sub I raised to the K power as I goes from one to N, right? Where N is the total number of levels of your structure. So N in this illustration would be five, okay? Five levels, all right? Now, uh, this, this summation is, uh, is applied to this entire term. So what we're doing is we're multiplying W1 times H1 raised to the K power plus W2 times H2 raised to the K power, so on and so forth, okay? And so, um, so this is given as equation 12.8-13 in ASC 722. Now this equation looks a little bulky, looks a little intimidating right now. So let's dissect it a little bit and make sure we understand um, what, uh, what this is. So CVX is called the vertical distribution factor at level X. Okay, so level X is, could be level one, could be level two, level three, whatever, okay? Now, um, what about uh, H sub X? H sub X is the height of level X measured from the ground surface, okay? So if you're interested uh, at um, H sub 2, H sub 2 is um, the, the vertical distance from the ground surface or the base of the structure up to level 2, okay? Um, now what about K? K is an exponent related to the structure's period, all right? So uh, K, again, it's an exponent related to the structures period. Now, the code tells us that for structures that have a period of 0.5 seconds or less, so we're gonna say um, if you have zero <coughs> T up to 0.5 seconds, all right, then K is equal to one, all right? Now, what if, what if you have a different period than that, right? So for structures that have a period more than, uh, well, a period of two and a half seconds or more, so we say T is greater than or equal to 2.5 seconds, then K is equal to two. Now, the question becomes, what about structures that have a period between 0.5 and two and a half seconds, right? So the next bracket that we're gonna write here, and this is all summarized in the code, if you have T, uh, sorry, let me back that up. If you have 0.5 seconds, less than T, less than 2.5 seconds, then what you can do is interpolate, you use linear interpolation to find K, or 
take k is equal to 2. Now, if you want to interpolate, uh, you can manually interpolate. Hopefully, we all remember how to linear interpolate. Um, or you can say k is equal to uh, 0.75 plus 0.5t. Now, this little handy equation right here is not in the code. This linear equation comes from uh, a general linear interpolation between k is 1 and 2 and t is 0.5 seconds and 2.5 seconds. So this is a, a little um, manually derived equation from linear interpolation. So those of you who like math, I encourage you to use linear interpolation with 0.5 seconds and k equals 1 and 2.5 seconds and k equals 2 and do a general interpolation. Put a k here and a t here and use your linear interpolation methods and you'll come out with this relationship or you can just k take it as k equals 2. The code uh, allows that, okay? So um, so what do we do at this point? We, we, uh, we get k and we evaluate this kind of bulky equation. Now we say CVx is the vertical distribution factor at level x, which means that you calculate a CV factor for each level of your structure. So if we're looking here at uh, this illustration, ask yourself, how many CV factors should we calculate? Well, I'm gonna tell you if you wanna pause the video and think about it, but you should have five CV factors because we have five levels, right? We have CV1, CV2, CV3, CV4, CV5. Okay, and then again, F sub X, how many FX values do we have? Well, we already drew that on the figure. We have five of them, right? And so what you do is you use the base shear force you calculated uh, from before as CS times capital W, and you multiply the base shear force one at a time by these different CV factors, and you'll get your different F factors, okay? Now, um, I may have actually said it, but uh, I'm gonna write it down again. What about W sub X, okay? What about W sub X? So in case it wasn't clear, or in case you don't have the uh, code in front of you, W sub X is equal to the effective seismic weight at level X, okay? So in case it wasn't clear before, how many W sub X values do you have in this particular illustration? Well, we have five of them, and I already drew them right here, right? So you have W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, okay? And remember, uh, all of those little Ws, what should they add up to be? Well, let's make some notes down here. Clearly, clearly, the sum of W sub I, as I goes from one to N, should be equal to, of course, W1 plus W2 plus dot, 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 all the way to plus WN. What does that equal? Well, that equals capital W, right? If you add up the effective seismic weights at each level, that's your capital W, okay? Um, what about uh, if you added up all of those story forces, those sum of S, uh, F sub X, except um, I guess we should use sub I here, right? As I goes from 1 to N, well, of course, that's F1 plus F2 plus dot, 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 plus Fn. What do we get here? Well, we get a total F, which guess what should be? That base shear, okay? And obviously, um, you can look at that and just think of equilibrium, right? You can say some of the forces in the X direction equals zero. And what does that give us? That says that some of these forces in the x direction uh, equals v, okay, that base shear, right? Think about it. If you add up, and, and just, just look back at our original diagram, if we add up all of these forces here, all of the forces in the x direction, they should equal zero when you add them all up, which means that the sum of all of these guys, uh, F1 plus F2 all the way up to F5, should equal this base shear right here. Okay, so maybe I should, uh, we'll put a little note here, x direction equals zero, right? And so here, this is as i goes from one to n, okay? Um, what else? Well, 
the sum of C sub V I as I goes from one to N should equal what? Well, you have C V one plus C V two plus dot, 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 plus C V N. Guess what that should equal? Well, it should all add up to equal the number one. Think about that, does that make sense? Let's go back and look at the CVX equation, okay? This equation right here, if, if you add up the CV values at each level, you should get one. Why is that? Well, this denominator right here is the same denominator. You, you use the same denominator for each CV value at each of the levels, okay? The numerator, the numerator is Wx times Hx raised to the k power at the particular level of interest, okay? So this is effectively like a weighted average. This is like a weighted average. So if you add up all the weights, the quote weights of the weighted average, you should get unity, you should get one, okay? So this video is again meant to give us some background information on uh, section 12.8.3 of ASC 722. Be on the lookout for a video example that um, exercises several parts of the ELF method, including a, numer a numerical part of an example which exercises this. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.